Hi, so Jack Eames, I'm so excited to be chatting with you today. Um, you are just like absolutely famous when it comes to the hair industry and your amazing, stunning, award-winning uh, fashion and beauty photography, working with some of the top names like like Kostakis and the Tony and Guy team and Fame and Errol Douglas and Richard Ashford, just to name a few. So thank you for joining me today. That's very kind. Thank you, Cheryl. Look, thank you for you know inviting me on board to come and chat to you. That's really appreciated. Yes. So uh, I uh, I would love to hear about your background. What got you started as a photographer? Okay, going in deep straight away. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's uh, go back in time. <laughs> nice, easy, um, quick question. Um, quick answer, even. So yeah. Um, look, I started study quite late in my life. Um, I left school with no qualifications and then went back after traveling around the world for a year, I think in my mid latest twenties and luckily had a really good photography teacher and he put me on a really interesting and good path and showed me that I, you know, I could create and earn a living out of it. So it's really, initially it was down to him. And then I was in a place called Sheffield um, which is in the north of England. Most people live in the north and come to London, but I did it the other way. Um, I went from south to north, uh, which is a bit unusual. I was determined to make it happen up there. I loved Sheffield, but yeah, it was it. Some of the most creative people I've ever met live up there, but the all the work is in London, and so I moved down to London. Shot my reshot my portfolio in an old warehouse in Hackney um and just went door knocking from there but my i guess my original love and what got me into photography professionally was my lecturer karen stowe but my dad has always sort of been really loved photography and art and i see old pictures of me when i was a kid and there were you know some stills in the background um yeah uh, just some incredible you know people from yeah different walks of life and um banjo players um whatever you know it was all sort of like pretty out there um yeah it was cool it's yeah cool. it's like a very eclectic mix of of people that you were photographing and uh did, did that get into fashion later on or were you doing like portraits yeah I started commercially in Sheffield doing portraits and architecture. I loved architecture in particularly because I love working with angles and composition um, and light and different times of day. So that that felt a lovely, strange, you know, commercial portraits on one side and then architecture on the other. But that's what helped me sort of just build my career, really. Um, but yeah, when I arrived in London, I didn't really have any clients um and yeah i i think i was you know i was very lucky when i was in sheffield i was shooting some model portfolios and i was always uh fascinated by the hair world um hair and beauty and of course fashion as well um back then there was a particular photographer who's still you know absolutely nailing it and it was andrew andrew tool so i got in touch with andrew um, and he was kind enough to sort of, you know, say hi. So from that, we, yeah, you know, we started hanging out. I was helping him, you know, with some gigs in London. And then, you know, just, yeah, started doing my own thing. Yeah, you know, you you really learn by doing, right? You can you can learn so much in school. You learn technical skills. But, but the creative side and the business side and, like, how things happen on set, you, you really have to learn by doing. So when, when someone is a great teacher, if that kind of experience, I mean, that's so invaluable. Sure. And with your makeup and fashion design and your whole art background and in the hair world for so long as well, you really, you understand that and see that and appreciate it. And I think so much of all that is about a feeling as well. We can't always verbalize it or even contextualize it, but we know when we feel we're with some good people creative people who you know it can be a two-way um reciprocal relationship that we can help we can learn from so yeah 
that's um it's really i think it's really important in anything but i think in particular with anything artistic because it can be so insular yes uh, um as a career and or as a as an art you know i think we are all artistic as human beings i think we naturally are but then it depends if we're lucky enough to meet someone that can you know help expose that and channel that yeah i having having a mentor in any business but um especially in our creative interest industry you learn so much and it's like little tips and tricks and things that you really need to be on set for and things that you learn about um and as a photographer like it's really important for you because you become the director of the whole set and the whole situation so you also have to learn how to how to manage people and how to manage you know the group and how to manage expectations like yeah. how how does you know how does that work for you like I, do you get to choose your crew all the time or i mean i guess it it, it varies good question and you know for me a really exciting question because it really varies all the time every shoot is different but i i prefer well sometimes we do big ad jobs you mm -hmm. know where an agency will come to us um and you know we've done various skin campaigns or various hang hair campaigns and if it's from an agency they will want three people's suggestions from me but it doesn't always materialize that you know the makeup artist or the hairstylist or the you know the fashion stylist will they will go with but i do like to try and steer my own team we're shooting quite a few hair awards at the moment here in the uk um and i very much like to try and steer my you know my makeup artist the fashion stylist um and i love feeding back on the models but yeah your team is everything uh, honestly down to the, whoever it is making the cup of tea to the client that there is no hierarchy in when i'm shooting because everybody is utterly as vital as each other in doing the one thing that we all want which is beautiful beautiful imagery or video and that takes a lot of work and a lot of pushing forwards and movement i strong believer in keeping movement and momentum especially on shoot days you know because and that's down to even down to your playlists and things because i think as humans we ignite when we're you know really um you know I so I think I might cut out there. Um, yeah, yeah. Sorry, just bring the last sentence back. I mean, you're well. You're from across the pond, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> might, might have dipped out on a little way, <laughs> um, but back in. Yeah. But yeah, basically, that we're just you know, I think we're in this arena where we, through our art, we, we try and connect with each other, and that is on set as well, and that is keeping the movement going and the momentum, the energy. Um, of course, like all things in life, there are things that happen on shoot days that maybe weren't planned or don't help with the timings or a certain look, but that doesn't matter. We always work through it and we always come up with a solution and we always get the look because you, you have to, like you said earlier, you know, I'm, I am the director of a, of a shoot and, you know, you can never, you know, show any sort of, you know, sense of uncertainty you just keep it absolutely rolling because everybody you know needs to be on that same page and and that's why i think it's really important that like i said earlier that the, the person who gets the teas or the the food is absolutely as important as the you know the model or this client um there's no hierarchy yeah well i it's really important to have a good energy on set because everyone thrives from good energy especially creative energy you're that you're there to create things kind of happen purposely and unpurposely on set that, yeah. that um whatever that great thing that you might capture um having a rapport with your crew and not like, you know, you're so familiar with each other too, if it's the same people that work together, like, you know, you're gonna bang out these like great looks every time because you just put so much trust in each person that's involved in the shoot. And I always say there's like five key people, you know, you've got your photographer, your hair, your makeup, your stylist and your model. And and like, those are what brings all the, the, the creativity together. 
and sometimes one weak link can bring down the full final image, right? So you just want to make sure everyone's feeling their best and at the top of their game. And uh, it's so great to be on set with someone who's like a pleasure to work with because it's always just, it's like a super fun day. So, it, you know, it's nice to hear that. It, it just sounds like it would be a lot of fun on set with you. You know, no, no, put you, check your egos at the door. We're all oh, to like create. You'll have to come over, Cheryl, get on a gig with us. Um, I would love that. You're very welcome anytime. But yeah, it is, it's all about working with good people, certainly down to my direct team as well, you know, which is like, you know, my assistant who will help with the lighting on the day. Um, but yeah, I think working with makeup, hairstylists, fashion, art directors that we have a history with is just really important. But equally, sometimes I don't have that. I, you know, sometimes we shoot in germany and things and i'm just going into you know we did a pretty big campaign in paris recently and i knew no one there we just had you know the zoom calls and things and it was a big set build and the models you know being flown in and things and part of my team that i booked were stuck in traffic in paris and blah blah, blah. but you know what it, it it all worked out and everybody had fun and um, it's yeah because I, as I'm sure you know yourself so much of the work is done in the build-up it's almost like the shoot day should be the fun part and the creative part where everybody has a bit of a roadmap of where we're heading but we all understand that we have some versatility some flexibility to get the looks that we need but then to have those five or ten minutes of to just to play and yeah. see what happens like you said a minute ago you know where you might see something and I always encourage the hairstylist or the makeup artist to everybody keep their eyes peeled and if they see something and they just want to get the model or whoever it is in front of the camera then let's do it let's try it let's explore those angles the the timing of you know uh we did um you know something pretty big with sally brooks last year and she was just um coloring the hair and she, you know I know Sally very well and she just came up and sort of spoke quietly in my ear and said, look, I know this is really ridiculous, but I'm at a point with the colour where I'm just seeing some incredible shapes. Can we just get this model on set? And we did. And they were they ended up being the pictures that we use as part of the collection. So I think it's working with people that really love and care about what they do. Yeah. Or even understanding that that journey to the final creative look that's going on set could Absolutely. be part of the way through, like what just happened, right? Like I'm doing this look and all of a sudden just this angle, just just throw her on set and get, you know, some shots out of it. Right. It's not, you know, it's not like before we were shooting film. It's like, okay, we've got three rolls of 36. Like we better <laughs> capture this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're shooting hundreds and hundreds. Yeah. Of yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're so right about this journey. And when you look back at, you know, one of my favorite artists, you know, Francis Bacon, um, you know, Francis was very, um, you know, just didn't want it to be out there that he did a lot of preparation and explorative drawings and things. And, you know, some of them got destroyed, some of them got hidden, hidden, but a lot of them were found. And, and that is absolutely part of the process and the journey is that things come up and it is that, unfinished bits or the certainly the imperfections that can be the the final the, the real beauty yeah well it's kind of sometimes the mistakes make the the coolest design features right like i, I know too as a fashion designer you know maybe you're sewing and then it's too you know sewing super late and all of a sudden you just sewed two arms together and you're like hey that's really cool i'm gonna make that a neck piece and like wow that's a great idea <laughs> yeah right yeah and there it is <laughs> Um, uh, I mean, I guess there's obviously you, you do some storyboarding and everyone kind of gets on board with a theme. Um, but do you ever do you ever like sketch out ideas and concepts? Uh, I guess maybe it just varies per project. Yeah, I um, it does vary per pro per project. I'm not great at drawing, um, but I do do some drawing before certain shoots, and certainly sometimes myself and the hairdresser. We'll look at drawings together certain hairdressers i work with draw the hair or draw an idea and then we distill that into how the hair might work and how we might light it so yeah i think you know the the i i do a lot of uh, mood boarding so although i don't draw i do a lot of building and sometimes it's 
really lovely to do some printouts, cut them up, put them in a like a little towel or a sheet, throw them up, see where they land. We <laughs> start you know, photographing some of those things, like I said earlier, with your phone, just when they're on the floor. And then you start to see little patterns or little ideas come together. So I do a lot of digital, but then I print. I print from the digital so that it comes to life. So it's in front of us because so much of what our, how our lives are these days is it lives on our phone, yeah, computer. But if oh, you print, I've got like eighty thousand pictures on my phone, it's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know when I'm ever going to go through those. <laughs> exactly, and I get it. I completely get it, and I'm exactly the same. But to have something tangible and to then, like I say, pin it up, cut it up. You know, some things we've set fire to or we've painted. Um, you know, it's just all stuff that happened. Uh, I did a really lovely personal project with the hairdress circle, Mark Frank and Painter, about two-ish years ago, where, um, you know, we did it over quite a few months. And on a freezing cold winter's day, I printed stuff out with a really dodgy printer at home, but I put them in water in the back and i painted them through the water but i filmed it all and that ended up being in all the final videos so it's yeah it's just exploring with um whatever's in front of you you know they, they were my at the time my four-year-old's paints they were nothing special um and it was just like water out of the back of the garden you know it's it's just um yeah, yeah. Playing. Well, that, that's artistry and photography together. I mean, that's like a whole other level of photography. I, I mean, I I'm, I guess you've shot with film before. <laughs> 100%, yeah. So, so you know, you're OG like me, like you shot with film, you understand how that works, so the dark room and processing and polaroids yeah. and, and getting the, the, the shot and bang on because there's no yeah. post back then, right? Yeah. So I think yeah. that was like, real true hardcore training ground for photography and, and fashion and image capturing and when you have that in your in your you know toolbox and then you bring that to the digital age like i, I love the fact that you're doing this kind of mixed media idea mm -hmm. with your your final images yeah interesting cheryl because this mixed media is crucial for my studio um we started filmmaking about seven-ish years ago, I think, and I was always really rigid about, it must all be shot on this one Sony camera and things. Last few years, you know, I'm shooting some with an iPhone. I've got a little Japanese camera that can hardly pick up any light. I've got my, still got my Sony. You know, and the point is, is that we mix it up and we mix it up with stills as well. Mm -hmm. I shoot on my Hasselblad, but equally I've got a little um, child's point and shoot. And because, I I just think we're so used to seeing zeros and ones, you know, the digital side of things mm -hmm. that we, we shut down. We, I feel like we shut down. So what do we do to make that work in a different way? And that's something as a studio that, you know, I explore all the time because I think I have to, um, especially in things like the Hair Awards, every single year we have to do things differently. Yeah, um, just to be fresh and relevant, and um, you know, I mentioned Sally uh, earlier. You know, and you know, she's a friend of mine. Cos is a great friend of mine. You know, we hang out outside of shoots, and you know, we meet for whatever coffees or beers in town, either my area or his. You know, um, and and I feel really fortunate to work with people like that who do what they love and love what they do and Cos's work has just escalated so I feel very privileged to explore all that with him and it's it, we go we go in deep before we shoot you know for months we have a lot of meetups and a lot of chats mm -hmm. and you know it's it's very exciting but equally come the shoot day you're, you're absolutely ready um, yeah well, the, you're, seriously, the work, I mean, obviously, he's he's just won every, all the British awards and, and you know, that's because of the incredible team that you guys are and, and how you know how to pull it all together and really what it takes to create a winning image, right? Um, I appreciate, too, that you say that you want to try and switch it up. 
uh, because what happens often is someone who wants to enter one of these awards sees what won last year and then they want to kind of copy that whole look. They're like, okay, like that's what the judges want. So that's what I'm going to shoot for. I exactly. mean, how important is it to shoot what you want to shoot versus what the judges want? Yeah, good question. So depending on the client, uh, there are two questions that I generally ask depending on the client. And that is, do you want to shoot for yourself or do you want to win? Um, and that they're, they're quite, they're quite different routes and both excite me and with certain people certain skill sets you can bring the both in um certainly with cos um but with the awards you know there's there's still ways that we have to handle awards um but then there's equally ways when when we just jam and do our own thing that um there's an, another incredible hairdresser that i'm sure you know the name of um sam burnett um, he's at Hair and Bone, and we've been doing a few things. He's just started working with Davinez, so we had a little celebratory kick around day where we just did, you know, we got three fresh faces in, and we just had a jam. And we both sort of just buzzed on it for weeks because we came away with stuff that we'd never ever do if we were, you know, on a paid gig or something like that. And it was just incredibly beautiful and. Uh, we were both able to explore so yeah i think yeah. Uh, so how important is creatives to you do you do you get to shoot them much i i mean i got i i used to do them back in the day i feel like i haven't done one forever and i miss it like i'd love to be on set and shoot a creative and do whatever you want to do and and then those images you decide what you want to do with them later like are they ready for an awards or do you just want to keep it for your social media or like personal promotion i mean there's so many things you can do with a creative but uh creatives are they're fun but a shoot is expensive too so you also have that kind of issue sometimes exactly that and certainly as the photographer you have a lot of expenses and it's a lot of time in the build-up not even on the day the day's fun and the after in terms of certainly if you're making films as well mm -hmm. um so yeah do i do enough personal work and creatives i don't because i don't have the time but when i do i really go for it um and we get great models in luckily i've got really good relationships with the agencies here and they're very happy to give us you know some of their best girls and boys which is great um but yeah i how often do i do creative your personal work probably about every six seven weeks which isn't that bad but yeah um i would like to do more i mean i'd like to do one a week but you just can't you can't realistically you can't run a studio commercially and do all of your own um messing about yeah so you have your own studio now <laughs> yeah so we're based in a place called white rabbit uh, which is in the heart of shoreditch there's three got three studios downstairs we've got the upstairs so we've got a lovely swathe of daylight you'll have to come in and see us cheryl you, we do great coffee there that the guys make do you like your coffee okay um, yeah um yeah i do yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. yeah. Nice. Being in toronto you will have good coffee mm, yeah. good competition and round by where you live so yeah it's um we've got the upstairs like i said there's natural light we've, we've got a roof area as well so we shoot on there sometimes i certainly see what we call go sees if a if a model booker wants me to meet a, a model they're just either bringing into shoots or someone that might be good for a certain campaign then we'll get them in and i'll take them on the roof for a few minutes and we'll just do some some pictures out there because it's, I, I love natural light yeah did you do um a, you did a shoot with with cause with natural light was that on your roof that was one of the most unbelievable days of my entire life i think because um yeah it, it wasn't on our roof it was on the tony and guy academy roof in the okay. center of town yeah. center yeah. of london which is one of the hot, tallest buildings in london and it was one of the hottest days for absolutely okay. years uh -huh. Um, which is all absolutely fine you know this we, we you know you roll with it and it was great but i i have vertigo um so but i never it's never really been a problem how um, small was the rooftop 
Yeah, <laughs> it was small. We, uh, we had ladders, and we had to like do you know health and safety up there as well. So it's pretty tight. But the issue was was that of course you know, sometimes near the edge you get the models going like doing selfies across. Standing back. The of, just, yeah, the whole of London. There'd be me just uh, going <laughs> off off the roof now. Yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> it was so bizarre. Um, I think with the first go, it would sort of make my stuff <laughs> flip a bit, and oh. um, I was just like poorly for the next two or three days. So, Coz, in our great, you know, just fun friendship, he caught, he named the collection Vertigo after how poorly I was. That's why it's called Vertigo. Oh, okay, I got it. Oh, I love that shoe. That was fantastic. Doesn't look like anyone was sweating though. <laughs> yeah, it's um. <laughs> no it was it was intense because we had the like i said the hottest hardest sunlight we'd seen for so long so we had to play with that and of course it moved as well mm -hmm. but you know it's lovely with that shoot a lot of people say you know how we worked the skin the hair um and the fact that we had that nice little separation with the shadow um from the near the model and the um it was a huge car park wall because next to the Tony guy building it's a massive car park and they just put these concrete slabs up and so we were in contact with them for months saying you please tell us you're not going to paint those slabs are you <laughs> yeah you know, can, you can you just stop your construction for a little bit <laughs> yeah, yeah. we got a shoot coming <laughs> yeah 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 um so yeah we we were in constant chat with them and we had to get all the kit up there as well so it was an epic epic day but again the team were great you know i do a lot with lan uh, makeup artist she was on makeup that day um you know and cos's team they're just so rock solid um, yeah. there's so many of them that i would count as friends and you know we've done various winning collections with over the years so yeah it's great yeah well shooting on location definitely has its challenges um do you do you like location versus studio or i mean they both have different outcomes and they both have great outcomes but do you have like a favorite for one or the other uh I think a favorite 100% is location, um, but it's slower and mm -hmm. that's fine. You have to sort of accept that in the really early stages of the prep is that, you know, we won't get as many shots and just because everything is slower, if you're moving lights or if you're in a massive house and you're moving rooms or, you know, the light changes outside and then you need to balance it with HMIs. So there's a lot to think about and obviously different kinds of health and safety as well, which, you know, of course, these days, everybody's rightly red hot on. Um, but yeah, I, I why, why I love location is because there's always something a bit more unexpected and often you can use the available light. And I think, you know, as photographers, we have two things in common these days which we've got to move away from and that is we all use the same cameras and we all use the same flash so if we're shooting with flash that is so to have uncontrollable ambient light is a joy and you mentioned errol earlier and obviously we chatted about sally we did a, a lovely location shoot for the uk fame team their first fame team in a house in the you know, south of london and it was gorgeous it was an amazing amazing day but we worked so hard that day to get the pictures um, looking really, really lovely. Um, and, you know, and it's, but yeah, I love it. It's, it's very tiring. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it, and it can be quite challenging. It could be windy. Uh, you're losing the light. Uh, there's nowhere for yeah. the models to change. Uh, you know, the yeah. hair's getting stuck in the lips, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. it's just all yeah. kinds of challenges that definitely uh, make it take a lot longer yeah yeah absolutely but it's great it's you know it's um it's a very refreshing challenge i'm chatting to a few you know people at the moment we're looking at shooting and there's a couple of things on location that i'm really wanting to for them to go for so mm -hmm. i'm trying to sort of steer that so that's that's quite exciting do you do you do location scouting or absolutely do yeah okay. yeah so I live in a place called Whitstable, which is where I'm at now, which is near Margate, which is in Kent. So we've got great locations around here and we've shot around here. But then equally in London, there are so many 
bizarre little places that no one really knows about you know just certain bits of concrete like i really like certain brutalist architecture and you know how i work is i never i'm never bothered about showing the whole building or anything i just like using small sections you know sometimes we've hired a massive location and i've only used one wall and the client halfway through is like we've hired this massive house and you're not using it it's just like look trust me everything that we're going to get is going to look absolutely incredible and that's how we shot in that pink house for the fame team is you know we just used one area and errol came along and you know yeah he couldn't believe it so it, it was great it was great yeah. I, yeah, location can bring a certain magic to the shoot, uh, just in terms of like textures and colors and feel of exactly. depth and things like that. Uh, you know, being being here in Toronto, I don't know if you've seen it lately, but we are so under construction. There's not even like a single patch of land left that isn't like a construction site. So yeah. trying to find something suitable on location in a big city is really tough and then of course you need permits if you're shooting on the street so you just kind of kamikaze it and just try and like yeah. bang off as much as you can before <laughs> yeah. it takes you away you know like <laughs> we uh, totally pulled yeah. that off in the cne grounds i did this great shoot a swimwear shoot of mine and it was it was just like a beautiful location and then the guy came over the security came over but we're shooting a beautiful girl in a bikini you know you just chat yeah. them up a little bit yeah. like we'll see Tom, all the photographers are going <laughs> yeah absolutely we, we all at it we all have to play the game don't you in those situations yeah. <laughs> yeah well of course you wouldn't take that chance on a shoot that you're hired for that's just a creative right <laughs> yeah yeah well, you can yeah you can do both but yeah definitely if it's a sort of an ad job yeah every, all, all permits and everything's so just so there's no surprises of course of course you have to be totally prepared absolutely um so was there ever like a time where like a, a memorable time that was like a really scary moment on shoot or some kind of like uh oh I, I hope we pull this off or you know models no show i, I mean after all these years there's got to be a, a few challenges that have come your way yeah i mean most of those have happened you know certainly models no show and you know but then you just put an email around to the bookers um gosh has there been anything um yeah off the top of my head i can't, I can't think right generally i'll run a pretty chilled ship mm -hmm. on shoots mm -hmm. because i think you know it's so important but yeah look i mean things have happened cameras have been dropped um you know um assistants have walked into walls uh, um I, you know an, another sort of different area that we haven't touched on yet is talking to personal work is i'm very involved with a charity called haircuts for homeless um and this has been an ongoing project for five years now and we made a book and uh, the owner's a very good friend of mine but we have had things during sessions where for example there's been fights um, not involving me or Stuart, but you know, so, some, some of the guests will kick off about an external reason, and yeah, things like that have been yeah. pretty cool on. Yeah. So, how long has that project been happening? And, and tell me, tell me a bit about a bit, uh, what it's about. Yeah. So, basically, I got into shooting with haircuts for homeless because, as you touched on at the start of our chat, you know, we we work in some really nice and privileged ways and i've sort of reached a point in my life certainly in my life but possibly my career as well where i just wanted to put something back but and not it be a one-hit wonder like a one shoot everyone splashes it over instagram and then it vanishes i wanted to work with someone that was ongoing so stuart the founder um he's set up i think about 70 or more different um projects throughout the united kingdom where hairstylists volunteer their time once every four to six weeks just for two hours so it's nothing and if anybody can't spare you know two hours every four to six weeks then i think they need a bit of a look at what's going on um and the guests would come to the exact time the exact venue in every single place you know throughout the uk so that they know 
when and where it is. There's, there's nothing to sign up. They would just queue and get their hair cut by Stuart or some of the volunteers in a very safe, caring um, environment to the point where sometimes you know people haven't had human connection or felt safe for so long that they would fall asleep um, while having their hair cut um, or just talked to or just touched. Mm-hmm. You know, just you, you, you're in that environment where it, it can be pretty full on with the you know the some of the people's lives and some of the different types of shelter that they're in so that does bring up its own challenges certainly photographically i only use available light i've got a small little camera so that there is a very small amount of any sense of intimidation you know I, i'm six foot six so that's not oh. ideal you know <laughs> i'd people come at me in those sessions thinking I'm a policeman. So, you know, it can really sort of kick off there, but equally there's so many guests that Stuart changes the lives of and his team. And certainly there's this situation in the UK with huge amounts of homelessness. And I think to work with someone who does very quick action and change on people's wellness and feeling human because we should all be allowed to have a haircut we really should uh yeah. it's really important to me yes that that's a beautiful project and so you you photograph that so you let them know that you, you we're going to cut your hair and we're going to take your photo and i mean are not everybody is easy to speak to i guess or some people just you know some people have mental challenges like that that's got to be a very challenging project for anyone who's who's cutting the hair and for you that's shooting and directing and talking to some of these people that are difficult to uh, organize. Yeah, exactly that. Um, I mean, luckily, on a lot of the sessions I go to, Stuart's sister, Belinda, is there. She's a bit like a gatekeeper. You know, she'll chat to the people first of all, or if she hasn't had a chance, I will just put my camera away, softly go over and just introduce myself, crouch down, have a nice bit of physical distance. But it's quite, I've been doing it for so long, that's quite easy to gauge who you can chat to and see if they will be okay with pictures. Then, of course, we get them to sign a form. There's no address or anything that's that's necessary. So, um, because, yeah, and you said it, you mentioned it a moment ago, there is a lot of mental health issues in homelessness because you know it's a it's very cyclical in terms of can people stay on top of their medication can they get access to their medication can they remember to take their medication and of course this isn't all the guests at all but it's been quite eye-opening how much you know yeah there is just going on especially in men um but we equally we go to various women's refuges as well where we feel very fortunate to go in and especially as a guy i have to be extra sort of you know very slow and very very you know just just calm and and respectful um but we ha- there's some of the most incredible sessions and that you know d- don't get me wrong that they're, they're, they're often so full of laughter and fun and um storytelling or singing you know, there's all kinds of things that happen there. It's yeah. one of well, the most. I, I, well, as as um, we're we're hairdressers, but we're we're hair therapists, right? <laughs> we yeah. hair, hair therapy. Um, just anyone sitting in our chair, we really, you are. we really take in their problems, their issues, their happiness, their sadness, uh, their special occasions. Like we're we're there for so much of somebody's life, and mm. we just become this therapist by accident just from especially that the more years that you do this the more you learn about human beings and you learn how to um uh you know make that person in your chair feel safe and comfortable and happy and confident i mean that that's really the end game right the Mm. artistry is what allows us to do that but like the the bottom line is you you want to give confidence to 
your client and the person in the chair or whoever that might be. So it's always very rewarding to have someone walk away and be super happy and just like yeah. on top nine flying out the door after seeing you and you you know you've done a good job. Yet yeah, the transformation is beautiful and that that should be accessible to pretty much everybody. You know, um, Sam McKnight, he's one of the you know the ambassadors of the charity we went to sam's house and we filmed him and he spoke beautifully about how important having your hair cared for and you know and listened to it is as a human being and how how it helps us feel about ourselves yeah. and it's so true so yeah. you guys do really change a lot of people's lives yeah yeah um, yeah, and then during the pandemic when we couldn't cut our hair and you can't have anyone touch your hair and yeah. do it yourself, and then that was a big mess. Like we really need we need our beauty industry. So it's very yeah. important. Yeah, very much so. Very much yeah. So. Um, uh, let's go back to uh, uh, photos and, and your work. What what would you say your your signature style would be? Like, do you have something that you know you can look at your photos and go, yeah, that's it. That's definitely a Jackie's shot. Yeah. Okay. Another good question. I think I always search for a charge in my pictures, be it an intimacy a an understanding a stillness a beauty certainly a beauty and i think we can't put into words really what beauty is because we see it we feel it we understand it we cut it you know it internalizes so i think i'm always always searching for you know for beauty and and all the definitions of beauty. So I think, uh, yeah, I, th I think hopefully all those things come into my pictures. Um, and you know, sometimes I'll just have a few minutes with with the model or the sitter or the guest, whoever it is, and I have to find that moment. Um, and and I try and you know we, we we capture pretty much everything in camera on set. That was one of the things about beautiful things for me as a photographer in this modern day and age of post-production and AI with Cos's most recent winning collection. Someone on set was filming me doing the printing on the day and that, and then he used those all across his Instagram for every single look. Someone was filming me taking the pictures and me printing. So suddenly we have all these videos of where nothing's been changed and it's just like wow what a what an incredible thing to have documented and done and all this was going on without any of my knowledge you know primarily because i'm just i'm in there with cos right and he and i are just sat on the camera working it and working the model and it's you know it's ferocious at times even though i look for a stillness and a and an intimacy like all things like like love in real life you know it comes with all kinds of things happening and so i, th I feel very very passionate about that shoot and those posts that he's done because they're they're honest they're raw they're visceral and in, like i said in this day and age of all kinds of stuff happening i really like capturing stuff in you know right in front of me yeah, I, I I see that in your work. I see I see beauty always, like always beautiful images. And you know, some photographers want to shoot for um, you know a reaction, like oh that that's kind of ugly or it's uncomfortable or it's like scary, like that. That's a style too, you know, like sure, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So and but I I always appreciate beauty, like beautiful. That's kind of more my style as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and I mean it helps when you've got gorgeous models. I mean when you shoot these these I always call them these beautiful freaks of nature. Like it's just like they are so gorgeous. They're actually a freak of nature. Like it's just yeah. incredible, right? The features, the skin. Um, I mean it's just that's all big a big part of it and a very important part of it. Yeah, that their attitude as well, mm -hmm. um, and the fact that some of them might come in reading a book. I want to ask what that book is and i do and we sit we chat and i check their gram out i'm not really interested in seeing their instagram pictures of them modeling i want to see their instagram pictures of whatever that them partying or you know just just life 
you know i get people contacting me all the time saying you know can i assist or come on set and um you know if i've time and they've hit me up at a good time the first thing i do is i look at their instagram and just just see what life they have going on mm -hmm. um, and i've been chatting to an incredible student at the moment um she uh, she's only i think 20 21 and her gram is phenomenal and you know she's so young but she's she's going to fly because you know with this conversation seems so much about art and creativity and straight away i saw it on her gram and when i skip people in, inquire and it's all just static sterile pictures that are you know okay they might be technically great but what does that actually mean? Right. Where, you, don't see, you don't see personality. Like you, you want to. Right. It's all about individuality and and authentic, uh, you know, uniqueness. It, everyone mm -hmm. has it, fashion and beauty has is just moved to, you know, this this diverse uh, range of of beauty. It's like such a different thing now. Beauty is beauty is everything. You know, beauty used to be very specific, and now beauty is everything. Beauty is uh, everything. Yeah, and 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 connection. You know, you can really have connection through beauty. And I think in all art, I listen to lots of radio and lots of music, but I will only choose to listen to stuff that I have a connection with because life's too short. And you know, but I think that's what is at the basis of all great art that we you know we personally love. And I know it's subjective, but is that we connect with it. And if we don't connect with it, then uh, certainly from my point of view, if, as a photographer, I need to take, you know, I need to find another angle. If I haven't got the shot and I can't ask the team to move on, that's fine because I, I feel like I haven't had that 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 moment, that connection yet. Yeah, and and for you as a photographer, it's really important to connect with your subject. Um, do you, you know every photographer has their different ways? They might have a little chat or you know make some jokes, be a total joker, like you know get the mood going, get it light, get some get some energy or conversation out of the model. Like you kind of you kind of got to warm up the situation first. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, you know I feel like I've got. A a great sense of humor but i'm not a comedian and i know my limitations so i will do it in different ways i will you know i will you know just understand a bit about the person before they've even walked on set by seeing them get their hair done and makeup and know what to talk about um so that we have a very quick instant connection and a trust mm -hmm. and that they feel trusting i'm not one of those photographers and I'd love to be one of those photographers that's cracking jokes and, you know, telling lots of stories. But I'm I'm quite an introvert. I'm I'm very, I'm quite a private person. I like things like going fishing and, you know, hanging out with my son and you know. But I know on on set days I perform and I have to perform. But you know, there's different ways of performing for sure. Yeah, well, and that's all part of being the the director and the, and the, you know the head the head cheese on set, right? Yeah, it's all about you. Question for you: Is print dead? Print is absolutely not dead, and <laughs> I understand if that isn't accepted by a lot of people. I don't care. Um, we make our own zines in the studio. I talk with certain clients about zines and and prints we send clients prints we send friends prints um i love print our studio maybe we could do another chat and i'll show you our studio is full of prints um and so no but in terms of print and magazines look objectively yeah it's in a difficult place you know, for the ones who do have a lot of advertising and things, of course, they can keep going. Um, but that's why I mentioned zines and things. There's different ways of doing it. And I think it's r tragic if things just live on a Instagram page and a website. You know, we should be working really hard at um, printing things out. And, and we do. I do a lot of that with Sally Brooks, for example. Um, but yeah, print in terms of magazines, for me, it's not dead. It's never been dead and it never will. Um, I love it and I need it and I thrive on it. And when I get off the train, when I'm in London, 
I'll go into Soho and you know certain magazine shops around there that are just great and just have the obscure you know either art magazines music mags whatever it is um we're shooting more musicians at the moment and i'm absolutely loving it it's a phenomenal area of work for me because the industry is moving more into shooting celebs certain clients that we work with want me to shoot more celebs so and i'm i'm down with that it's you know it's a very different kind of work with different talent but it's it's cool so look sorry i'm i'm diversing uh for me print is not dead what do you feel well for me i uh because of my my background in fashion design and um my mother used to collect cosmo magazines from the 70s you know wow. I, I hope somewhere in her basement she still has those because growing up my mother was a magazine junkie so i i have wow. always been all about print and then because of my background in fashion design, I used to go and spend probably like 100 to 150 bucks a month in in books, in, in uh, hardcover books, coffee table books, but okay. magazines like crazy, right? I'll, I'll, and again, so we'll have another call and I'll show you my book collection. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I love a good tangible book. I love, I love a magazine. I love a coffee table book. I love fashion and art books. I'm a collector of them. Um, I, you know, it's sad to see, and, and this has been going on for like a decade, we've watched the decline of, of magazines. Sure. Um, and, and just because, you know, it, it's technology, it's, it's the sign of the times, it's change, I, like I get it. Uh, the cost of print is expensive, advertisers don't want to spend their money in print anymore because digital is like a fast hit. You know, when we were making the, the magazine for Canadian Pro Beauty, it takes like three to four months to put this together. And then by the time it's out there, if you're talking about events, events are now old news. Mm. Um, but a photo lives forever. You know, a photo, you could have a classic look or you could have something that that shows the the, the era or the date, whatever it is, it's that that image lives forever. And so, I, you know, I, I think it's really important to continue with print and and make sure that uh you know our industry gets to see things in print as well because we're, we're kind of missing that these days couldn't agree more and i think we're in such a an industry where we are about the visual that as best as we can i think we're kind it's kind of part of our responsibility to keep it going and that's not i'm not suggesting spending x amount of money and you know, putting everybody at various hardship it's about maybe coming together and doing it in the right way in the right thing because we, i love it we we we've done quite a few zines in the studio and the the process but the outcome is you know it's what you said a moment ago it will last forever and this you know like for example if you've got some of those old cosmos out the smell of those magazines or the the smell of a magazine from three years ago or one week ago they all have their own character or they have the, the fragrance strips in it right <laughs> yes yeah so yeah. i so, and then i had this idea i wanted to do this but it would have been ridiculously expensive but you know how shampoos have uh, all products have a scent to it so yeah. would it be great to have a scent strip for you know whatever kind of shampoo so you can smell it as well yeah like let's bring back something sensual and tactical and 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 just uh, you know bring back your your senses because a magazine does affect your senses right yeah. well doesn't it's just like your brain i guess you can't yeah. smell or feel a, a digital photo <laughs> you said a really valuable word in all this discussion but also about chatting about the magazines and its senses and it's we have a responsibility to stimulate senses um especially in this zeros and ones going on you know everything's digital and we and again you said it a minute ago everything's fast and everything's processed immediately no 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 i think um we Scott should bring it back. We need to bring it back. We need to support the industry and however we can and bring back, bring back. Yeah, 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 okay. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, one last question. Um, if someone was starting out in the industry as a photographer, what do you think their first step should be? Like, what should they be 
um, doing in order to to get the ball rolling. Okay, good question. Can I give you an example of that from last week? I had to give two online lectures to a university of year three students and year one and two students, so two separate lectures, okay? And obviously a lot of those questions were around that, what, what advice would I give? And the first thing that I would say is that every single person who wants to become a photographer can become a photographer. The only thing that's gonna separate that happening is if you've got the hunger and the fire and the no compromise, that is what will make you become a photographer and that's that has to be there and if you know if you don't want to do late nights or all night sometimes or early starts or long stuff go look at something else even before we get into you know what what makes a photographer but yeah i think these days you have to have an understanding of video um it's you know luckily all i ever wanted to do was make music videos so it's been a natural progression for me for quite a few years and i absolutely love it i love shoot days where i can light with a continuous light and we do the stills and we do the video as well with the same light so to have an understanding of video to be shooting all the time whether that's your mates with your phone you don't need a studio you don't need a good camera you don't need flashlights just shoot most people have phones these days and if you haven't I totally understand that. Just, just borrow one. See, see if you can get hold of something to take pictures. Play with them in Photoshop. Um, you know, Photoshop is is our friend because um, you can also print from it. Um, and just to shoot. That's what I was telling all the students this last week is that you must shoot because you will learn so much by doing. It's like what we talked about at the start of this conversation. Yeah, you can go to uni and yeah, you can different do different studies and blah, blah, blah. But until you're practicing and you've got someone stood in front of you and then all the mistakes are happening, you know, just, just do it. And you can get hold of models locally. You can go on Instagram, Facebook, whatever. There's all kinds of groups, um, but just do it. Have action. Um, yeah. Don't just, you know, pontificate and waste time and over over mood board just set a date and also minimize you know if you're serious about it and you do it for a bit just minimize your team don't get a makeup artist a hairstylist a fashion stylist a studio just maybe get a makeup artist you can also do hair as well so that's taking two people down to to one just where you're building things up because invariably when you're building things up people will pull out at the last minute or they've been out the night before and don't want to do it but yeah, um, I think it's a wonderful thing to get into, but you absolutely have to do it with love and care because if you don't, people will see it and they won't want to work with you. Yeah, well, you have to pay your dues and it, it takes time to build and it takes time yeah. to build a portfolio. You know, back in the day, we had a print portfolio, the nine by 12 printouts and your, you know, your yeah. book, right? We don't have that now. We have Instagram. Don't even need a website anymore. Nice. It's, really, it's really about like you, you just the more work the better because that's the experience that you need you just, yeah. you just need to build yourself and you build your portfolio and yeah carry on and find the direction that you want and that will come over time and and just know not too many expectations and pressures on yourself mm -hmm. and, and have fun yeah well i appreciate our chat today uh oh, i've so loved it cheryl and creative i know we can talk for like hours about this yeah <laughs> absolutely uh, yeah i really i really appreciate your time and and uh all your words of wisdom and creativity and uh you know i thank you again for our chat yeah thank you for having me show i really enjoyed chatting with you and exchanging ideas and thoughts so thank you thanks okay we'll talk soon yeah. See you later. bye 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 bye